Hello Internet, I'm Guy. Today's project is about locking the spindle on my mini mill. Uh, a viewer named Anthony showed me a very clever idea he had for putting a pin in here mounted to a plate with a spring that pulls it back and then a little knob right here. The idea was the spring was so weak that it would just hold it out easily, but you could push it in, rotate the spindle a little bit and lock it in place and then when you want to uh, release it, you just either turn the spindle a little bit or just pull the knob out. It's very clever and very simple design, only a couple of parts involved. I've decided to improve on it very slightly, so uh, stay with me and I'll show you what I've come up with. But while I've got you here, I uh, just wanted to show you some things that you may not have seen if you haven't seen one of my other videos about all the add-ons and improvements I've done to the mini mill. One of them is a very simple one to just have a magnet here for my um, chuck key. And of course I put a big chunk of Delrin on the handle to make it just more comfortable to hold. And then I made this little thing here that just clips on to uh, allow me to use a, a handle here to turn the, the z-axis. It's just more comfortable. So here's the plan. This is the original locking rod and this is a spring I'm planning to use. If I make a small groove right here and install an e-clip then the spring can push against it rather than being trapped underneath the z-axis cover here. So this is going to be sitting here under compression. If a lever, a cam lock lever, is locked down like this, then that will actually pull it out. So it won't be under spring tension. And then if you lift the lever up, it will push this spring in and force it into the locking position. So you'll have this clear indication with the, the handle of this locking cam sticking out that you're in the locked position. And then you can just quickly flip it down in case you need to quickly get to it to release it. So this, this locking arm is a really crucial part of it. But also I'm going to be making this bracket right here that will secure it to the z-axis cover. That was 8 thou, which I, according to my calculations should be perfect. So let me see if I can get this to fit now. I'm not sure that's going to go on there. I'm going to give it a try with a pair of pliers. Okay, I've got the clip on there and it looks like the spring is going to hold. So that's a good first step. Okay, so I have a chunk of half inch aluminum plate marked out for a uh, block here with a cutout where the slot will go through, the um, pin rather. So let's get this going. Okay, I'm going to start by squaring up this piece of stock that I cut out. Put a little WD on there. Get my fly cutter going. Okay, now I'm going to square off the bottom end. And now I'm going to do a single pass to clean out the cutout here. Now I've got that basic block worked up. So now I'm going to drill the borehole for the uh, locking pin that will go through there. I'm going to start with two uh, fractional drill sizes down and then work my way up very carefully. One more drill step up. And five sixteenths. 
So now I've drilled that 5 16 inch hole. I'm going to take the drill bit and reverse it and test fit from the back end. And yes, I think that will slide right through there with a little lubrication. It's a little bit sticky. I might want to clean it out one more pass, I think, with the mill just to, just to open it up a little bit. So now I've got some six millimeter bolts that I'm going to put right through here and inset them. It drops the heads right in below this surface here. So these are designed to go all the way through this block and into the cover for the Z-axis. Well, it turns out my six millimeter drill bit was dull, so I'm going with a 15 64th bit, which will do just fine for this application. I just need a clearance hole. So now I'm going to drill a 10 millimeter hole for the cap and that's going to go about 7 millimeters deep roughly. And a quick check to see if that head will drop in nicely, and it will. All the way in. Yes. All right, let's do the next one. The original Z-axis cover plate had Phillips head screws, and I don't much care for those, so I'm going to put some uh, hex cap screws in here, metric of course. Cut those in there and secure it nicely before I start aligning everything. I don't know whether you caught it, but it looks like I drilled the uh, recess for the heads of the mounting bolts on the wrong side. So I'm going to have to reset up and recenter to find the centers for those. Just drive this around a little bit, and uh, that looks good. Lock down the machine, and then I'm going to drill those out. Last time you saw me drill the recess for the cap screw head with a drill, and of course that was less accurate. So I'm going to start with a milling cutter that is just a hair under size for that particular 10 millimeter drill. Get that done to depth, and then I'm going to f tidy it up with the drill bit. So before I change out to the drill chuck, I'm going to go over and recenter on the other hole, and then I'm going to mill that and drill both holes after that. So recentering. And let me relieve that hole now. And so back to a 10 millimeter hole all over again. Double check my clearance. Yes, yes, that will work. Okay. All right, so here's the initial test fit of the parts uh, minus the, the locking arm that I'm going to put on there. So if I squish this down and I rotate the spindle, boom, that drops in just fine. So now I'm going to mark uh, these holes and drill them in and tap them in to the uh, Z axis cover plate here. And then I'm going to work on the arm here that will be the locking cam. So I've cut off the shaft a little extra long to start with, and I'm going to center this whole system up just nicely to where it's where I want it, and then I'm going to use my wrench to just use the screw, hopefully, to make a mark to where I'm going to make my first hole. Let's see if that worked. Yes, I can see a bit of a mark there. Over to the drill press, I've got a number four drill, which is a good tap size for going into steel for a uh, M6 bolt. Okay, now I just need to tap that for an M6. I'm going to use my tap guide for this, so even though it's not super essential. Just want to get it nice and straight. Yeah, that's only 
one and a half threads at best, but I think it's enough to get a bite. Okay, so this bolt is now tapped in to the Z-axis cover there. That's nice and tight. I'm going to use a transfer punch now to uh, align the second hole. This is obviously not a metric transfer punch, but it's good enough. That should be great. Now I know exactly where to put that other hole. Okay, I have a nice divot right there from the transfer punch. Drop it right in. Okay, I used a square here to get that fairly level. And now I'm just going to tap this other hole. Whoa. There it goes. Oh, it doesn't take much. There's not a lot of metal there. Okay, so reinstalling with both holes drilled and tapped. That one right in there. Get this one started. There she goes. All right. Tighten those down a little bit. There we go. So now I'm going to rotate the quill and let's see if this thing just drops into place. Oh, it is already dropped in place, I guess. Hmm. No, I think it's I think it's stuck. Okay, I have to adjust something. Okay, minor adjustment. That's nicely tightened down and secured. Now I can test and rotate the quill and boom, locked. So all I have to do now is build a cam arm that will pull this out when I bring the arm down. That's the next part. So I don't know what kind of material this is, but I'm pretty sure it's some kind of stainless steel. So I'm going to take a shot with my high-speed steel cutter and see if I can take six thou off. And if not, then I'll just use my grinder to create two flats on here that will be part of the grip for the cam that will move like this and pivot through a pin. Let's see how this works out. Oh, that's looking great. This stuff melts beautifully. So I'm going to keep whittling away at this. Okay, that's 20 thou. I'm going to go 25 thou on each side and see how that looks. So in order to true up the bottom side, I'm going to release the clamp, or the vise rather, and flip this over and then rest it on this parallel. Get that up there. It's a little high now, but if I just let it go, it'll settle. And that should be as parallel as I need it to be. Okay, final pass. Okay, this looks pretty good. I actually went down to 30 thou off of the radius on each side. And I've got a nice flat surface there that I can work with to attach the camshaft or the cam arm, I guess. Okay, I established center um, on both axes, so from side to side and the equal distance from the end. I'm going to do a center drill now. And then I'm going to go for an uh, eighth inch hole for an eighth inch uh, roll pin. Here we go. I'm not sure what that metal is, but it drills like a dream and machines beautifully. It's like butter. I changed my mind. I'm going to go up to 964. So this uh, hole will be the pivot around which the roll pin uh, swivels. Let's have a look at the uh, roll pin see how it fits in here. Yeah, that'll pivot just fine. It'll give us some wiggle room so that the whole thing can have a little slop. All right. Okay, so now I'm looking at a stick out from this edge to the center of the hole, roughly, of uh, 0.588. And then when I drop it in, that's a very nice snap action. 
367. So I'm considering using a piece of UHMW plastic because it'll bear on this surface as it pivots around. I'm going to be making a curve right here so that as this drops in, it'll pivot like that. So you, you will pull the lever down and that'll pull it out and you'll let it go and it'll fall in. So I have to figure out now where to put this hole and where to make this radius. That's going to be fun. Oh, and of course then I have to slot this out to have this go in there and pin it. So I've drilled a hole in this material here and I've measured in the two dimensions that I need. If I make this curve, I'm hoping that this is going to give me just what I need. So I know this material is kind of hard to work with, but it's a great for a prototype. So I'm going to try and cut this out on the bandsaw and sand that to that radius and see if this is going to give me what I need. Then, of course, I can tidy all this up and make it into a nice lever. Okay, proof of concept test. I've got a drill bit in here that's the next size down from an eighth inch. And so I can pull that open like that. So now it's free to turn. Then if I let this up, boom, that seems to be working just fine. So now I'm using a quarter inch two flute cutter to go right through here and make a slot all the way through for the, uh, the rod or the pin. This stuff is messy. All right, go a little bit deeper. Okay, I've got this all cleaned up with an X-Acto knife and this will drop right in there and we'll pivot around there all degrees of action of movement so all I have to do is pin that and I'm going to test it with a drill bit and see if it works okay so I've got a drill bit in here and as you can see if I pivot this up like that and rotate the quill eventually it will just go boom so that's locked and then I can just release it like that so I've decided to round over these edges to start with, and maybe I'll just leave it at that. And of course, I'm using a woodworking router bit to do that. Uh, yeah, I know it's kind of heresy in machining world, but I have a lot of router bits and I like to use them. If you haven't seen my previous video on this subject, router bits are a great way to work with non-ferrous materials. So here we go, I did one pass, I'm gonna tidy it up. Okay, I've got the uh, roll pin in there now, so if I want to uh, lock the carriage, I flip this up, rotate the quill, and boom. Sometimes this doesn't flip all the way up. Unlock, rotate, lock, boom. So this is just a placeholder. I'm going to do an improvement on this eventually, but the idea is there. This, this cam action, it works really well. And I like using um, some kind of plastic material. The UHMW is a, is a nice material to guide against the aluminum. So this works really well. Well, I guess I'm not going to be using this anymore. This seems to have worked out pretty well. Uh, there's a few refinements I'm going to make later, but um, I've conveyed the idea. If this is helpful to you, give me a like and subscribe and stay tuned for more interesting projects like this and other things that I'm going to be making using these tools in addition to upgrading my mill and my lathe. Thanks for watching.